Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is February 20th, 2024. We are back with another daily analysis. All right, market just uh, went down today, down tick, and uh, we kind of like expecting this price action. So we just uh, find out a fair amount of support uh, just on SMA 20, which is coming to this support as well, somewhere around uh, 40, if I'm not mistaken, 49, 53. So market obviously coming back below 55,000. And uh, SPY just traded 68 million, which is kind of like a light. So 68 million for SPY is light. So this is not heavy sell. So we're going to take it as like a corrective move and we're going to just uh, waiting for, see how market is going to just uh, react to this pivotal point, which is somewhere around 4,900. So 4,900 is kind of like important because if you get pierced through below SMA 20 and just uh, testing this area, just forming a lower high, testing previous support, this is kind of like a bearish signal and we can just uh, move back down to 48, 41 which I believe this is going to be the decisive moment for the market because that is very important. Lots of hedge fund managers are paying attention to SMA 50, which I don't. And I'm just uh, looking at the price action. But uh, this is coming along with this support. So that's very, very important. If we get below this one, then I should say market will have uh, kind of like a decent correction to the downside coming along all the way down to 4,700, which is important level still this area could be a potential scenario but i'm just uh, saying um i should say from the beginning of the february february march is very very important time and we are kind of like getting into the danger period for the market we should see some kind of like a bearish price action um, dominating um this next two weeks i should say at least and uh until all the way up to March 22nd, 23rd, which I'm going to explain why I'm coming along with that date. But but that date is kind of like a reversal, probable reversal. It depends on the market. So, uh, But until then, we will have one month. And this four weeks uh, ahead is going to be a choppy to the downside. The obvious scenario is going to be a corrective consolidation. But if it goes down all the way to 4,700, I should say this is going to be a good area to just uh, take a look. If it goes below that, we will take it. But I'm not sure if we get down there. Uh, 4,700 is going to be important. Um, Stochastic-wise, we just uh, confirmed the bear reversal. We are still uh, pretty close to the overbought condition. So it can go all the way down to oversold condition and get a buy signal coming along with daily uh, with a price action, so daily chart price action. So still, you're just uh, sitting on the side waiting for more corrective move down the road. Moving on to NASDAQ. So NASDAQ at a sharp sell-off today, just uh, going all the way down to pretty close to 17,400. But I didn't um, get uh, to 1750. So just wait for that one. Still looking for this area as a good fair amount of support, which is going to be 17,200. So 17,200 is going to be important. But after that, I just need more confirmation about the market. If market is going to go down, it can go all the way down to here to 16,000, which I don't think it's going to happen. This is going to be uh, kind of like a worst case scenario. But if it gets there, um, we're going to take it. But uh, right now, I'm just looking for um, reaction to this level, which is going to be a 17,000 to 17,000. 20. So we will see how it goes. Move momentum wise, we are just uh, coming down sharply and uh, we are in no man's land between oversold and overbought condition. I should say by end of this week, we can get uh, to this area, which is coming along to oversold condition. And if you get a reversal, which could be kind of like another scenario for tackling to this high here. I'm not sure if you get there, but if you get there, so we should see if this oversold condition is going to react kind of like a bouncing uh, reaction to the market. Moving on to Dow Jones. Uh, Dow um, is kind of like a very, very doji bar. So look at that. So Dow doesn't move since I should say uh, beginning of February. It just uh, don't move and it's just going sideways consolidation. 
we are kind of like uh, forming a very, very typical Dow Jones price action because Dow usually is kind of like a heavy stock or heavy index, I should say. It doesn't go parabolic too much. So since beginning of November, or I should say um, October 21st, that was kind of like an exceptional scenario. So this is very, very sharp move, too far, too fast going all the way up here. Dow is getting back to its nature and it's kind of like a move very, very slowly. Um, most of the time, just the sideways consolidation because the stocks, uh, the type of like a pricing that Dow has is different compared to S&P and NASDAQ. It's kind of like a price cap uh, index. It's not a market cap index. So this is very, very important in type of scenarios that uh, NASDAQ is up, S&P is up, but Dow doesn't move and vice versa. So because of the nature of this index is different. So Dow is, I believe, is getting back to its nature. Even if it goes down to this area, uh, it's it's pretty normal after this move. So we should just wait for a corrective move. But momentum-wise, when I, whatever I see here is kind of like a down, very, very down momentum. Look at that. So if it goes here to the oversold condition, it depends on the price action. So we should... Uh, we should take it as a, like a good buying opportunity again. Weekly and timely, if it shows us corrective move is finished, so we can get back to the long position. Right now, again, I'm just sitting on the side. Moving on to gold, good price action for today. So gold is starting this week, not bad. And uh, daily charges to continuing to the upside. It just hit my first target, which is at 2030. And coming back down, so gold just hitting to kind of like, uh, I should say intermediate or short-term resistance here. But if it consolidates here, we can just uh, see another spike to the upside. If we get above 2040, and if it goes above this, I should say any pullback could be a great buying opportunity to the higher. I posted uh, gold analysis video specifically just last weekend, make sure watch that one. I just put a link here. So that's that's pretty good uh, video, I should say. I just uh, go to different time frames and the reasons that I'm bullish on gold right now. Moving on to crude, had a negative day today. So crude is coming back down. This is kind of like a sign of reversal. Stochastic was we are seeing a dual back bear reversal coming along to this pivotal point. So. A uh, 78, 79 is kind of like the area that we are seeing a reversal. If reversal goes down here to 73, then we should see some kind of like potential over sold condition here. And this oversold condition bull reversal can just the trigger to the upside to all the way up to 78 to 82, which kind of like the scenario that I'm looking still, just that going up and down higher high, higher low, very, very um, typical technical price action is happening for crude right now. Um, I just wanna show you before moving to Bitcoin and individual names, I just wanna show you this chart, which is copper weekly. I post uh, copper rarely like analysis, but this is very, very important, I should say. This gives me confidence that the stock market corrective move uh, will be just a correction. And if it this one goes above this 300 or four, uh, 390, 400, we should see some kind of like a bullish action coming back to copper. And this is usually bullish for stock market and commodity. So keep an eye on this chart. This is a weekly copper chart, but right now copper is bullish. I am bullish on the stock market and overall economy because this tells me that still economy is doing well. I know lots of uh, people are saying, um, what are you talking about? Like uh, we are just having lots of death issue or something like that. I'm talking about the short-term price action for the stock market for the next, uh, I should say next few months could be bullish based on this chart. Moving on to individual names, starting with Bitcoin, bullish consolidation is forming here. And this is pretty interesting because a Bitcoin doesn't give us any corrective move, was waiting for correction, it doesn't give us and we are just uh, sitting on the side. This bullish consolidation, if it triggers to the upside, 57 to 59 is coming down the road. So we will give 
Bitcoin benefit of doubt for now. Yield is coming down today. So yield, again, getting back to the, I should say, a bearish momentum. Specifically, when you see CPI is coming for Canada, and the important of this is Canada is one of those countries started to increase the rate very aggressively before any other um, banks like um, Bank of England, like uh, Federal Reserve or Japan or something like that. So Canada started, I believe, uh, in April 2021 and start uh, going up uh, with the rate. And right now, the CPI came up and uh, just the, for the first time after this inflatory period, it goes back down below 30%. So it just uh, nailed 2.9%, which is kind of like a big surprise because inflation, like a Fed fund rate is 5% right now. And this is above this number, very above this. So last time when we had this type of inflation CPI was 2018, 2019, and Fed fund rate over time was 2%. Just imagine we are 3% above and probably Bank of Canada is going to start rate cut in April or March. If they do so, you should see in Federal Reserve um, do the same as well, because that's kind of like a leading indicator for me. This is a U.S. Fed fund rate. This is a U.S. bond yield um, uh, chart. And right now, it's just coming back down because it seems like inflatory uh, indicators are showing us we are kind of like uh, seeing this corrective move as we expected, but probably inflation is going to go back down again for the next uh, two, three months as the uh, the dovish tone again is coming back to the market somehow. So we will see how it goes. Treasury is optic today, so eight cents up, still consolidation. If Treasury goes down to 89 to 91, we can take it as like a good um buying opportunity weeks spike up today jump back up 71 cents going back to 16 and then coming back down a good spike for VIX. but uh, this shadow is just for um last hour uh, buy buyers coming back to the stock market and VIX is down i should say consolidation can hit up to 20 dollars as well dixie coming along with bond yield coming down today so i should say weaker dollar is coming it's not going to be a too much but I should say probably this is going to be at the top or 105.50 that's going to be the top still if we can see spike or i should say dollar is going to get a weaker and weaker and we should see some kind of like a selling pressure um taking control on the dollar chart uh, magma indicator coming down today a five dollar 42 cents apple is down today apple is forming this qm pattern right now holding up 180 but if 180 broke down to the, uh, to the downside, that would be kind of like a signal for us 162, 166. So we should take it as a, like a good buying opportunity at that level. Amazon, $2.43 down. Amazon is coming slightly to this gap. And if it goes to this gap completely, I should say it's going to fill out this coming all the way down to 152, 155. Meta. Dollar fifty-seven cents up to uh, down today. Microsoft dollar twenty-seven cents down. Good price action here. So this is kind of like uh, the candle here. Buyers come back. This is kind of like the support, and this is the demand area. That's why we see shadow today. But if it doesn't get back to the bullish momentum, I should say, double test this area four hundred can go all the way down to three hundred seventy-six. Google coming back up today, 60 cents. Uh, good price action for Google, holding up this area. I should say well, lots of good support here, 160, 136. Netflix coming down. So kind of like getting into weekly supply area coming down today. And Tesla 3% down, test 189, coming back up 193. So um, this wide range bar, I don't know if it's going to just consolidate here, which is okay for the next tackle to 207. Moving on to semiconductors, which were kind of like a rock star previously, but seems like they're just uh, showing some sign of rollover or weakness here. 
So SMH coming down $3.97 down, even after hours goes another dollar down. Socks, the same pattern, $10.52 down. Taiwan Semiconductor coming down already. It was in rollover phase. AMD just hammered today, specifically after hours. It goes down 4% down. And I should say AMD can go all the way down to here. I'm going to be buyer at this level. I'm not going to be buyer here. NVIDIA, $31 down today after hours. It goes lower, even lost $17 after hours. NVIDIA is in rollover. I should say NVIDIA can go all the way down to 500 area. Right now, we are at 681. So don't be surprised if NVIDIA goes all the way down to here. So we'll see how it goes. Texas Instruments, $7.36 up today. Good price action for Texas. We have this. We own this. I believe this is one of the good ones coming when the other semi-tech tech names actually are lagging. This one is going to lead in. Uh, Lamb Research coming down uh, after hitting new all-time high on Friday. It goes down today. XLF, Spider, Banks, they are coming down. Financials, they are coming down today. So not a bad price action. Still a good in top. So correction could be a good buying opportunity. Don't short this sector. This sector is pretty strong. Uh, if it goes down to here, somewhere around 35 area-ish, so we should take it as a good buying opportunity, if you ask me. KBE, 29 cents down. KRE, 38 cents down. After hours, it goes lower. JP Morgan, 70 cents up today. Not a bad price action. JP Morgan, bullish consolidation on the top at new all-time high. So we'll see how it goes, if it's going to rip up to the upside. Goldman Sachs, a good weekly consolidation. You'll look at the pattern. I like this pattern. When it triggers, it's going to just go all the way up to 428. Right now, it's at 384. Bank of America, 13 cents down today. And um, it's it's not a bad session so far. Wells Fargo, 14 cents down. Um, still holding up. This is like a good bullish consolidation. Let it consolidate more because it's going to go higher. Moving on to gold miners, GDX, not bad price action, but I just expect more bullishness coming along with gold because the nature of these names are a stock. And the stock market didn't have good day today, so they are just lagging, but it's okay. At least that they just hold up 13 cents up today. GDXJ, one cents down. AEM, 82 cents up. Good price action for AEM. I believe this is one of the best, and it's kind of like a good shooting to the top. Newmont coming down, lagging today, 24 cents down. Franco Nevada, dollar two cents down today. Gold Barrick, eight cents up, not a bad price action. So be neutral with this sector for now, but I should say this one can be, uh, I mean, like a gold miners in general can be one of the best one, especially second half of this year. Moving on to the last sector for day, XLE, which is energy spider coming back down, kind of like a following with gold, uh, sorry, with crude, which is normal. XOP, $2.10 down, OH, $2.77 down. Uh, stocking this triangle, Exxon, 98 cents down, and Chevron, 63 cents down. So these names are holding off for now, but I should say if they break these support here, that's going to be bad. I'm just uh, looking for kind of like sitting on the side. I have one energy name and my subscribers know that, but I have one energy name in my portfolio. It's kind of like a decent position, but I'm not going to accumulate more right now. I'm just looking for cheaper price because I believe the cheaper price is coming. Uh, then inflation is just cooling down. These ones are going to go down as well. And we can have a good buying opportunity down there. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Um, this is for today. If you have any questions, please put your comments, questions down there. Make sure to like this video if you like it. And that's it. Have a fantastic evening. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.